Welcome everybody to, uh, that's right, show up available and we have, we are available tonight for creating conditions for a great experience here tonight, so thank you all for coming out. Um, this is a donation uh, based uh, presentation, so please remember the blue bowl by the door on your way out and thank you in advance for that. And um, I am uh, recording this. Uh, no names and no faces except mine. <laughs> um, so, why don't we just start and uh, just introduce yourself and then if there's something you want to talk about, we have plenty of time to get to what is on your mind. So, let's start with... Okay, um, I'm Gina <laughs> and I'm just here to just kind of catch up and I'll take in everything I can. So, nothing in particular. And I was trying to think of something particular because you probably <laughs> came in here thinking, oh, I'll get the ideas from your group. Uh, I'm working on the same thing I really always am, just making making sure that I'm open to all the new experiences that are presented to me and um, being discerning on deciding go left or right. Okay. I'm Elise, and um, I just want to share... You know, I, I came to your first class October of last year. Okay. And, you know, we talk a lot about just shifting a little bit at a time. And you don't always see, you know, as that's happening. But yesterday it was very clear to me how far I've come. Um, I was at church, and our church is celebrating their um, 20th anniversary or, or birthday or whatever. And so the... Um, the pastor said, since we're celebrating 20 years, turn to your neighbor and, and just to give you something to chat about, um, think about if you could go backwards 20 years or forwards 20 years and change something, what would you choose? And so I turned to my neighbor and we introduced ourselves and I said, I wouldn't change anything. And I really meant it. And that just um, shows how much I've learned in the past year. And, Excellent. You know, how much I'm embracing the, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And, you know, he said, oh, I change a lot. Of <laughs> 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 I said, well, I have this class you need to do. Sure. <laughs> sure. So, anyway, um, as far as, as what I'm working, you know, it's been a while since I've been in. So just um, refocusing on um, manifesting okay. what I want. Okay. All right, great. Well, give yourself a round of applause because you're right where you're supposed to be, as always. And there's always an opportunity for more. So think more. Think bigger. Come on in. And uh, think more and think bigger. Think about clarity okay so I really want to focus a little bit maybe on clarity tonight we owe it to ourselves to be clear about what we want um, because in the absence of that clarity we show up vague our energy can end up going in lots of different directions at the same time. Our thoughts can end up going in many directions. Our words will go also in many directions. And we are very susceptible to other people's opinions. We're very susceptible to other people talking us out of things that we really want or into things that we don't want. And Absent that sense of clarity, um, to use a biblical phrase, we're tossed to and fro like the waves on the sea. We are without direction, and when we are without direction, we're without power. Direction equals power. Now, why does direction equal power? Because if I'm on a sailboat and I set my sails 
in accordance with the direction that I want, that's going to propel me forward using the wind to leverage my movement to go in the direction that I want. The same thing in a car. <laughs> I have to steer the car in the direction that I want to go, and therein is my power to get there. If we are absent direction, again, we are powerless. Now, maybe not completely out of power, but we are less power. We have less power to get where we want to go, and we have less power to get what we want to get. So, what do we need to be clear on? We need to be clear on the conditions and values and again this is in the context of what it looks like feels like and sounds like what do I want. Hey. Come on in. Hey. My What's up, brother? Good to see you. So, um, what do we want? What is the picture in our mind? And it's important to have a picture. Okay, some type of picture about what the end state looks like. Okay, so if I'm in an organization or a business, I want to picture who are my employees, what is our mission, who is our customer, how, what is the process that uh, brings them in or, or gets me business, how do I keep the business. Um, how do I market, network, advertise, all of those things, but I have a vision in, your, in, our, in my mind. That's why one of the key things about an effective leader is they have a vision of the big picture, of the big picture. Because once you have the vision of the big picture, then you can create each little piece of that big picture. So we're talking about both big picture and little picture. Now this is all relative. If I want a new car, uh, might seem like an individual single thing, but in actuality I'm driving that car all over the place. I'm going to work in it, I'm having fun in it, I'm taking friends out in it, I've got my family inside, and so this is where what do we want I can create a big picture around a little thing, meaning I find purpose in it. What's the purpose? Why do I want what I want? So what? What happens if I don't have it? What happens if I have it? How will I use it? Does it lead, how does it lead me to something else? What is the value that I get from it? What value does it serve other people? Sometimes we can be very, very uh, narrow-minded or tunnel vision that what we think we want is all about us. And that might be true to some degree. But pick in your mind what you really want. Just land on something for a second. How would that thing that you just thought of serve other people? Who else would benefit from it? How would it impact other people's lives? What are the myriad ways that getting a new car would impact people's lives? Who are you impacting? Let's just make a list. If I want a new car, who am I impacting? Yourself. Myself? Salesperson, family, family, my boss, 
Okay? See what I mean? There's more than just me going out and getting a new car and it's serving a single purpose. There's a much bigger picture out there to think about. Because sometimes when we think that the biggest purpose is just me, then I can go, oh, well, that's selfish for me to want a new car. I should just be content driving the car that I have. I really don't deserve a new car. Getting a new car really wouldn't benefit anybody. And therefore, I'm just going to keep driving the car that I have. So the more I can think about the various types of people and situations that even something small as having a new car might influence, the more good and value I can see in it. I can go, wait a minute, this is, if I get a new car, man, I'm keeping the salesperson employed. I'm keeping the car dealership employed, the manufacturer, the parts, the racetrack down at the, at the station, okay? My friends and family who are going to enjoy it the little car wash that I'm going to take it to that counts on it, okay? So when you start to do that, you can start really feeling good and creating that high vibration energy that says, wait a minute, a, a new car, that would be fantastic. Look at all of the opportunity, opportunity in just getting a new car. But remember, the first place that our mind goes to is lack. We either, are, we either experience lack on the inside, thinking that we're not worthy of it, that we don't deserve it, that we shouldn't get it, that we can't afford it, that we don't have enough money, or whatever scarcity complex that might be driving our belief system, or we can project outward and come up with reasons why we think other people don't don't think that we should get a new car and all the reasons why. And that shuts us down. It makes us unavailable. By focusing on this bigger picture and the purpose and draw, drilling down into the little picture, I start to really see the dynamic of what it is I'm creating. That's why we are such a, we have such powerful creative power. That's why we have dominion over all things, because it's not just about you. Christine's uh, Zen Den, her Reiki practice that she just opened uh, recently. That's not just about Christine. She's going to be serving people. She may employ people someday. Okay. Her rent that she's paying on her space is going to pay the landlord. Her utility is going to pay the, the companies. She's creating a physical environment for people to walk in and have an experience who will then go out and based on that experience, influence or impact other people because of the healing that they just received from Christine. Doesn't that magnify everything when you really think about it? Your, your picture taking, you know, you can think, well, I'm just snapping a picture of somebody and it might, you know, it, it, it might, uh, if you think small about that, you could see very low opportunity. Uh, it's just a picture. It may go up on the wall for it a period of time, but that, then it will end up in a drawer something. You know what I mean? And we can picture, we can um, have that type of vision. But that creates scarcity, it creates low energy, and it influences, it negates any true power that we have, and instead creates us a large power of vibrating with negative or low energy around it. So that's why we dream big. That's why we're constantly um, encouraged to dream big, to dream bigger, because it's just not about us. So the first thing to do is let's stop being selfish that way and be selfish by honoring what we want and really putting it out there in order to serve other people. So this clarity, this process, and this principle comes down to um, 
honoring what you want. In the absence of honoring, the opposite of honor is dishonor. So when you dishonor what you want, you kill the dream, you kill the impact, you kill the potential influence on multiple other types of people and, and, and various conditions. Um, and that stifles growth. And then we wonder why we experience stress, anxiety, poor health, uh, poor finances, poor relationships, because we've already decided that it's not worth it, we're not worth it, I'm going to think small, I'm going to think scarce, there's no resources out there to help me. So dream big, think big. Pick your biggest dream and put it on the, on the mark. Um, there's a book, uh, I know I talk about Grant Cardone frequently, but his book, The 10X Rule, is about take whatever goal you have and 10X it. Now, that's a big concept. I try to apply that in my own life just to get my head around it. And the instant I go, well, geez, I'd like to make $100,000, you know, if you 10X that, you're talking a million. All right? And the very first natural instinct is to go, ooh, I could never do that. Yeah. I can't put a million dollars out there as a mark on the wall. You know, who am I to think that I could do that? Why do I think I would deserve? Why do I think I could be successful enough or find the resources or produce something of that much value? But if you can't say a million dollars, you can't get a million dollars. You can't. That's why there's a value, very valuable um, technique that I'm going to start using again, and it's that money book where you start to put in, if it's about money, you start to make daily deposits and you spend it down that day. So you, you would write down, for example, today I deposited $10,000. So I got the date, the amount deposited, and then I have to spend it. I have to spend that $10,000 right then and there. So I might write down three or four things that I might do with $10,000 or one thing that I might do with $10,000. So it might be $5,000, $1,000 might go to tithing or a charity donation, 10%. You know, $3,000 might pay a credit card bill. Another $3,000 might go on a down payment or to buy something for my business. So you kind of spend it down, but at the end of that, one or two minutes, I've spent the $10,000 and I've described what I've spent it on. And then tomorrow, I deposit $20,000 and I have to do the same thing. Or 15, whatever kind of increment you want to play with, it really doesn't matter. What that exercise can get you start to doing is to go, wow, what would I do with a million dollars? Can I even say a million dollars? Can I even say, write a check for myself for $100,000? What does it feel like? What comes up for me if I write a check or think that I can deposit $100,000 in the bank? What emotions? What, what limitations? What old beliefs come up? You'd be really surprised. They will come up, even though this is a, a pretend exercise. Okay? But then once you catch the vision, you can start to dream like, wait a minute, okay, because after a month, you know, you're up in the millions of dollars now, okay? And imagine if, if you had a million dollars that you had to spend that day, what would you spend it on? Now it really blows your imagination out of the water because you've already bought the house, you've bought the boat, you, everybody in your family has a new car, you know, you've already got the trust funds for the kids, you know what I mean? You've paid off student loans, whatever. So you've met all those little things, but now you have a million dollars, and what are you going to do with it? Well, see here, this is where you go, well, what? I've always wanted to help fund a domestic shelter or start a nonprofit uh, for this kind of cause. So I'm going to start my own nonprofit, you know, for veterans or for single mothers or, you know, animals, whatever it might be. So you see what I'm seeing? So now you're funding a foundation. So that little exercise is very valuable in helping you get clarity 
also on who you are and the type of person you are. What do you think is important to spend money on? And so that feeds right back and providing positive energy right back into this process about what you want right now in the direction that your career is going, your work is going, your relationships are going, where you live, what kind of car you drive, the bills that you have to pay, all those other things. That energy feeds right back into it. So let me talk a little bit about conditions because we're always creating conditions. So I had an experience recently where um, I was coaching a client about communication in a relationship. And he was very adamant about how he wanted to show up and the type of conversation that he wanted to have, but more importantly, his expectation on his partner. Come on in. Huh? No, it's right down there on the right. And so um, he was more focused on and attached to what he wanted the conversation to do. Hey, David. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Come on in. He was more attached to what he wanted out of the conversation instead of creating conditions for the conversation to take place. I want her to say or do or to understand this. Okay, I get it. But then I was like, what type of conditions do you want to create in the conversation so that you can arrive to the conclusion or the conversation that you want to have? And that's the question. The real question is not what are your expectations out of the conversation. Because if you get attached to that and focus only on that, you've got ego driving you and you're less likely to get the results. Whereas if I say, wait a minute, I want, I, I want the overall purpose of the conversation to be around our relationship, but it's more important that I focus on the conditions of the conversation which might be peace, safety, attention, tone, words, affection, understanding, active listening, speaking the truth, speaking the truth, courage, confidence, peace, clarity, respect, acceptance, love. Okay? Now none of those terms that I just said right there have anything to do with the end result of what I want for the conversation to, to go in and of itself. But I know that I'm not likely to get what I want from the conversation in the absence of the conditions I want to create. Because if somebody's defensive, if they're triggered, if anger's being you know, uh, displayed, how much understanding, peace, and solution, and, and um, problem solving, and solutions, collaboration is going to take place? Very little. So think about, think about what you want, but then, then go to, well, wait a minute. What conditions do I need to create, do I, or do I want to create? that create conditions for success. What conditions do I want to create that will um, impact the success that I want? And you can use this technique in sales, family relationships with kids, significant others, uh, work or whatever, whatever it is you're dealing with. How, this is where showing up. I show up in order to create conditions. How I show up, if I show up available, I'm creating conditions for success. I create conditions for success by showing up available for those conditions. I create different conditions if I show up unavailable. 
Either way, I'm, I'm going to create conditions, and either way, I'm going to get results. But again, it goes to, what do I want? Values are those things that I just mentioned, uh, which, which add to the condition. So, uh, the value of respect, okay? I want to create respect as a condition, okay? I want respect to be part of my conditions. I want love. I want trust. I want peace. I want clarity. I want confidence. I want empowerment. I want honoring. I want uh, active listening. I want those values present as a part of my conditions. Because if one of my values is respect, that the whole outlook that I have about what conditions I want to create for us to have this conversation. Does everybody follow me on that? So the more clear you can start, and then based on that, then you can start to describe, well, if this is a respectful conversation, what does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that sound like? What kind of words are we using? What kind of tone are we using? What topics are we talking about? How are we talking about them? Oh, um, and how does that affect our tone and our, our physical energy? Feels like, oh, then what kind of emotions is that likely to create? Oh, warmth, affection, love, honesty. And then sounds like, okay, if I'm going to show up and demonstrate I want, because I value respect, I'm going to bring respect to the table and, and, and create respect or the conditions for respect, what words do I want to use? What phrases do I want to use? What tone do I want to use? What does it sound like? Is everybody with me? This process is what I use when I'm scripting. This is what I'm describing. Okay, so if I'm gonna dis if I'm gonna script or journal affirmatively about an upcoming presentation I want to do, I s describe in my scripting what is the you know what are the conditions I want to create? What experience is the will the audience? What experience is the audience having while I'm speaking? Okay. What values do I want to demonstrate as I do my presentation to the audience? As I do that, what does that look like with my energy and the response of the crowd and standing ovation and excitement and good energy? What does that feel like? There's a bonding with the audience. There's trust. There's emotion. There's uh, connection. There's rapport. See what I'm saying? And I'm describing all of that. You know, the audience loves me. They, I love them. They feel my love for them as I engage with them. They are engaging, having a pleasant time. You know what I mean? And I start to describe that. And I, then what does that sound like? Well, I am articulate, charismatic, and uh, relevant with my word choice and with my phrasing and with my tone and my gestures. See what I'm saying? So, and th I am this already. And thank you, God, that the presentation is already perfect and everybody has left the presentation at the end and they're feeling inspired, motivated, uplifted and they share the message with others and it has a lasting impression in their workplace to create conditions for more success and oh they invite me back and I get follow on business. See what I'm saying? So I'm being that descriptive as I'm scripting about a presentation that I want to make. And by doing that, I'm getting real specific, very specific. I'm not just writing, oh, it's a great presentation and it was a success. That doesn't mean anything, because what does success mean? What does success look like, feel like, and sound like for me? What does it look like, more importantly, what does it look like, feel like, and sound like for them? And so when I say clarity, this is what I mean by clarity, and this is the goal. This is the, this is the um, level of clarity that we want to get to. And it takes practice to get to this level of clarity because we are very vague people. <laughs> we, 
We don't think in terms of a lot of specificity. We're not specific with our words when we describe what we want. Oh, I want a good car, or I want a happy relationship, or yeah, I want to make this sale. You know, I hope the sale, go, the sale goes well. And that's about it. But that limits our ability to create optimal conditions for this bigger picture. So that's why I say think big, but you got to write big. You can't create big with little goals. You can't create big with a little vision. You can't create massive success with limited thinking, with old behaviors and old beliefs. Are there any questions around kind of what I've laid out here? Any examples of how you all are using this? Yeah. Idea? Yeah. So when you say I'm going to deposit ten thousand dollars into my account, and here's how I'm going to spend it, and the next day I put in fifteen. Do you put the same things down and put for ten and then beyond? No. I've already spent the ten grand. I've got everything that that ten grand bought me. Okay. See what I'm saying? Now, I take it back. If I'm buying something really big in the early days, right? Let's say. I'm depositing 10000 but what I really want is worth 100000 okay? Then I can say on day one, deposited $100,000 and I spent it or put it towards this thing. See what I'm saying? Then the next day I can say, oh, I've got $200,000. So $200,000 is now towards funding this. See what I'm saying? Until it's paid for. So you can do that, you know? Did that answer your question? Okay. So give me an example out there of how clarity has served you or how not a lesson learned from lack of clarity. So in visualizing the new car I wanted, I got detailed to the point of like I felt the leather steering wheel and the yes. heat of the seat heater yes. <laughs> on my rear end. Yes. Did you write <laughs> that in? I have them. <laughs> Did you script about that? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That creates that creates the emotion it creates the alignment because it really aligns then your emotions because that creates an emotion. Ooh, my seat is warm. <laughs> we all know what that feels like and it does create an emotion for us when it's cold outside. Comfort. Yeah. And that's what, that's what this process does. Is this process is, um, again, it goes back to this word, alignment. Because in the absence of clarity, we are not aligned. Okay, we are vague and all over the map. And so it's hard to set sail and head in a specific direction if every time the wind blows, our sail flips around and we're headed in another direction. And then somebody says something that causes us to, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. Man, maybe I can't do it after all. Or, wow, this is more than I thought it was. Okay? When in actuality, thinking big... And then deciding, choosing, this is a deliberate choice to get clear. Get clear. Get clear. Now, this is another thing we talked a little bit about last week. If I'm not clear, what can I script for? Gratitude. Gratitude. Can I script for, uh, can I script an Attitude for clarity in the absence of clarity. Yes, in fact, that's the ideal. Because I'm scripting as if I already have it. So thank you, God, for the clarity that I have. Ideas are already manifesting. I am starting already to make sense of things that I really want. I trust that while I'm in this process, 
things will come to me in divine time and order. And, and I, I already have all the, all the puzzle, pieces of the puzzle and I am putting together, putting it all together in the present moment. See what I'm saying? So, I can have clarity in the absence of clarity. See, that's the thing, is sometimes we think that if we're not clear, we don't have clarity. Well, if you look at it that way, guess what? You're not going to have clarity. If I say, wait a minute, I don't have it all figured out yet, but I'm clear that I'm discovering what I want. I'm clear that there's a process that helps me define what I want. I'm clear that I can, exp that I can exercise radical trust and I can be certain in the uncertainty. I don't have to have all the answers. I just have to trust that the answers are already here and it takes time and process for them to come forth. And that's, that's what, that, what comes when you create conditions for that. Um, one thing I heard on a podcast recently that's along the same lines, and, you know, you could, God, the universe, whatever you believe in, but is saying, I know that your dreams for me are even better than my dreams. For yes. Me. And so I claim those, the ones that I don't even have the ability to dream. Thank you for dreaming you know, those for me, or I know that, that you know, you're, you're already working on yes. other things than I can even imagine, right. and I like that. that and, and that is a true statement. Um, spiritually speaking, God is already working behind the scenes on whatever that you want, whether you even know that you want it yet or not. Because if you wake up a year from now and decide you want A, guess who's already been working on it? Okay? The people are already being prepared. I have one client who's moving to Jacksonville. She found the perfect apartment. How does that happen? Because when God's working behind the scenes, He brought people into that place before her. He brought the last 10 people into that apartment in divine time and order. They all moved in at the right time and they all moved out at the right time so that she can move in at the right time. That's how it works. When you start to allow your trust to get to that level that says, wait a minute, I'm going into this interview, I'm going for this opportunity and I can either think small or realize that God's already been working behind the scenes to prepare the people that I'm going to meet to set up the connections at this networking event, at this show, at this meeting, you know, at, when I walk into a restaurant, okay? The things are already lining up. And when you claim that, that's a powerful word, thank you for bringing that up. When you claim that in the present moment, alignment occurs again. Oh. And uh, it wasn't until maybe a week ago I said, I want to go back to home. I said, I don't um, want to go back home. And uh, I, I, I told myself that already. And I remember talking to my grandma and I said, I'm going back, I'm going back home. Bro. And um, I applied for this job that I've interviewed before several times. I never, I would keep, I would keep, uh, getting further interview, but they would never hire me. Okay. And so before the storm even came, the hair came and stuff, they called me and they said, can you come here every Thursday? So I came up here. Oh, well, I applied for a job, but then they, they called me right away. And I said, yeah, I can come Thursday. I came um, and I interviewed. The difference is I interviewed the position over, but now they had new people in place. Mm -hmm. um, and there was this one particular girl, Naya, that I've been talking about. She's a talent. She's a talent acquisition for. Them. They didn't have that before. And along the way of the process, she's been telling me everything to say. Uh, and I had my final interview with the CEO of the company. She said, "Don't do this. Don't 
say is, the last person who said this, they got like this. Right. And I really want the position. Sure. And it, it's like all the other times but when I didn't get it, it's like now I, I got further insight. Yes. And now that I want to move back, it's like it's happening. The position I always wanted before when I was here, I didn't get it, but it was like now that I want it and I want to come back, the right people are in my path. Yes. That, and then the, the funny thing is, they I interviewed Thursday, they come back Friday, they come back in today when I could have just left. And they had, so it's all happening while I'm still here. You know, so I, I, when I thought about it, I was like, man, everything is lined up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's convenient. Yeah. You know, and when I, when I hear this, he said, man, I like you. And he said, I like what you bring. And, you know, shake my hand. I don't know if I got it yet, but I feel good about it. You feel good about it. Assume that you did. Assume that you yeah. didn't get it. Yeah. And it'll bring you a lot yeah. closer. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a perfect example. Congratulations. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. But see, had he doubted himself... Had he doubted his intuition, had he doubted, doubted his purpose, had he doubted what I want, ah, uh, maybe I should go back to Atlanta, nah, you know. I've already interviewed there. They yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he could have created all sorts of obstacles or limitations in his head, but instead, he went to radical, trusted his intuition. You have to trust yourself. In the absence of trusting yourself, none of this works. Yes. Uh, when I was down there, kind of, I, it's almost like I could taste the uh, man atmosphere. <laughs> and I was like, man, I got to get back. <laughs> and so now that I got back, it's like, just from day one I got back, I've been doing this. I, I, it's like I just plugged back in my life. Perfect. You know? um, so, it, but I visualized myself. I'm yeah. Like, like, I already turned that corner, like, <laughs> well, and when you visualize it, what you're really visualizing is you're visualizing all of these things. Because it's like Babe Ruth, never let the fear of striking out get in your way, okay? He knew what it felt like every time he connected with the ball and sent it over the fence. So that was what he was going for with every swing was that alignment, right? The, 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 the golfer who hits the perfect stroke knows what his body feels like. He knows, you know, every part. He doesn't even have to look at, you know, he knows from the moment he connects the quality of the stroke, okay? Well, the same thing is true with us in our work and our relationships. And, and pursuing what we want is, is we know what that alignment feels like. And when we act consistent with that alignment, we create conditions for success. And acting in that alignment is what showing up available is all about. We're available for that alignment. If we're unavailable for that alignment, we're going to experience very limited results. We're going to experience a lot of doubt. But that's where we do claim it. We say, wait a minute, I'm going to claim this new job opportunity now. It is mine. I already have it. This or something better. This or something better. I'm full of divine trust that I've been led right here for some purpose. So even if you didn't get this one, you would think, hey, God brought me to Atlanta. There must be something else uh, here for me, right? Um, David, you had something. I did. Oh, did, <laughs> did, I, did you make a move like you wanted to say something? Oh, okay. Um, so that is the context of what we're, what we're doing. But it takes courage to play in this realm because it does require a lot of self-trust. Well, when you find yourself in a moment of self-doubt, self don't want to start getting, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have ever done, or maybe that will never come to pass, or you start feeling your thoughts far going down. Right. What would you say would be the 
quick as quick. I mean, it's easy to say just claim, you know, claim that. But like, how, what's the switch? Of, the quickest way to switch your brain back into a? How do you arrest those thoughts? Sure, sure. Like, and put them to quote it pretty. Short. Absolutely. Great question. Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. So the first key is you have to know that you're going down that road. Right. So um, self-awareness and being mindful and paying attention to your energy and recognizing it, the sooner you're able to do that, the less energy it requires right. to turn it around. Right. Okay. So, the first commitment that you claim is the ability, an increased ability, to pay attention to your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions so that you can more quickly identify when you're out of alignment with your truth. And so, what are your truths? That's what you affirm. And then, when you start to go down there, again, there's no guilt or shame with having some low energy. We're human beings. We're supposed to have that. It's okay. So just the one place to go would be to go, thank you, God, for reminding me of who I really am and what I'm really capable of. I choose to release and let go of this old belief. And I intend to replace it. I'm replacing it right now with this new belief that is my truth. See what I'm saying? Or, you know, thank you, little Johnny, for reminding me of the old belief everything's going to be okay we've chosen not to believe that anymore and instead we believe empowerment trust faith prosperity abundance minded so everything's going to be okay and again that denutralizes the energy it honors it instead of instead of hating on it okay because hating on it just creates more hate and conflict, observe it, release it, switch. And you can script for, I am divinely led to new keywords, phrases, and uh, quotes or reminders that I can use in an instant to replace any old beliefs or limited thinking that appears with me during the day. And I can honor that voice and release and let it go. And I can honor the new belief instead. Is that helpful? Just practice. And you can't get it wrong. Okay, because you're right where you're supposed to be in that process anyway. Whether you're really good at it or whether you're just learning. So there's no judgment if, <coughs> if where you are in that capability is down here because everybody's down here at some point and everybody comes back down when life events happen but by training your mind and your attention and your words and staying connected to source you go I'm connected to source this feeling I can honor it but I can release it it's not going to stay around very long okay Excellent. Excellent. Because Vince Brown, he said, you either going into a problem or you coming from it. Absolutely. And what's a problem? A learning experience. That's all it is. In fact, I want new problems. I want new business problems. Why? Because that, what would that mean? My business is growing. Okay. So, we're, I mean, growth is continuous. And we're always measuring the gap between, you know, where we were, where we are now, where we want to be, what we don't have, what we have, what we want to have, you know. And it's all about measurement. But the thing is, the measurement really doesn't mean anything. Because we're a tree, you know. We're always growing anyway. There's no part of any tree out there that was bad. It just was. 
Okay? So, release judgment about the measurement and instead just perceive the measurement as an opportunity to go, wow, look, where, man, look, I used to be here. This kind of thing used to take me down for days, you know. Instead, it's just a little speed bump. Eventually, I won't even be paying attention to it anymore. But I'll have something new to learn. And the universe will come along every once in a while and remind me of something I learned back then. Because my ego might think, well, I've got everything licked and I'm not going to have any more of those kind of problems. And whenever we get into that mindset, guess what we're going to do? We're going to attract one of those kind of situations. Because uh, the universe isn't done with us. You know, the respect route of our tree, the love root of our tree, the communication root of our tree, the relationship root, uh, you know, the parenting root, the co-worker root, the whatever value or life lesson root that we all have never stops growing. And it's all connected to all the other roots. And that's okay. When you can be at peace with that, you can go, oh, oops, well, learn something there. Okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to spin down the river of guilt and shame and go upriver, you know? Or do I want to go, you know, shake it off, get back up? What did I learn? What do I want to do different? Stop thinking that it's the end of the world or that it must mean something significant like we're losers or failures or never supposed to have this or never supposed to do that, right? Those are the old useless thoughts. And uh, replace it. It's not the growth that takes place. It's how we, it's how we look at it. It's, not the, it's never the lesson. It's how we perceive the lesson and what it means as, as the determining factor to whether we are um, stuck or moving. So, you know, we got the turtle there, pace, respect the pace, which I owe to David. <laughs> Be present in the moment and respect the pace, respect right? This has become a huge thing, so, you know, this uh, summer. Um, just by chance, I got a, not certified as a life coach, but as a coach. Excellent. And, uh, Your basketball or well, it's sport athletic it's coach? school paid for me to do, not like counseling. Oh. And, uh, I did it. It was a mid course. And then you had to do, uh, you got to do hours. So at school, uh, I'm at a middle school, I do uh, uh Speaking for uh, basically for me, it's the law of attraction. Yeah. Middle school. Yes. Wow. So uh, it, it's also <coughs> coaching basketball, you know. But with that, I have taken it um, kind of out to the streets. Yes. And I've been using respect to the pace. Yes. And um, it has been a surreal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what's my, it's funny, that's the topic, I, I, I feel that it has become therapeutic for me, you know, and um, as I do this and my journey through, you know, that has happened to me from my head to where I'm at now, it was, has been a journey, a real journey, and um, a learning journey, where a lot of things has fallen in place, but uh, I get a lot of discussions about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's funny about relationships, you know. People have questions always about, um, and I see now by the, doing all the things I've been doing and coming here is that everything that you want to do and everything that you want, you have all the power. It's, it's amazing that you have the power of I had one yesterday in East Atlanta, and uh, 
the young lady just kept talking about relationships. And it's funny, because everything she said, she she was putting it on the person. You know, uh, control, and, uh, all the stuff I'm doing. It, it was it was funny because I could see it so different. Yeah. And I'm like telling her, I said, it's not about him. It's about you. Until you get okay <coughs> with yourself, whatever he's doing it doesn't even matter. Because if it's okay, you're okay with it. But if it's not, then you say, cut it. Yeah. But when you cut it, you okay. The reason why you go through this all this stuff now, because it's fear. It's fear the unknown that he may leave you or you may leave him. Right. Yeah. So the whole the whole battle, the the, the challenge of the of, of, of the law of attraction the universe is to be okay with yourself. Absolutely. And she was like, man, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> said, but it's sim it's simple, but it's the hardest thing to do because it's it's you challenging yourself. It's easy to challenge somebody else because it's win or lose. I thought I'm, I'm going to do what I have to do. But when it's you, I said that's when it becomes so, uh, that's the battle. And uh, so it's been, and I, I use this. I said you got to respect your pace. You also got to respect his pace. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, she was like, what you mean by respecting his pace? I said, you're not going to make him into the man you want him to be. If he wants to be that man, he will do it. It's that simple. She was like, but I can't wait forever. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but you, you know, if you're good with yourself, you won't. You won't wait forever, exactly. You won't. I said, um, she was like, Man, I got to do some, I got to do some searching and defend myself. And then finally, she just finally got to the end. But I just find it that um, it's all about uh, when I talk to students, uh, I tell them it's all about them. I say, you know, forget about everything else. It's, it's all about what type of person you want to show up. Mm -hmm. You know, and. And you know, my principal came to me and just just happened to um, I don't know, like since last year, everything has happened in the in the way last year, the way that I believe I set it up to be. Excellent. Yeah, and it's it's continuing going in that direction, the way I want it. I haven't forgot about Italy, but I have. Um, you know, you said something a long time ago which uh, now I see it, which is, Italy is always there, it's always there. It's a, it's a part of me, but um, one thing I have clarity is that I know for sure that will be my, my final, my destiny, my final destination. And because of that, I'm okay. So I live in the present. You're at, and you're at peace with it. I'm at peace with it. It's, before I was struggling. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. But I thought it was going to disappear, you know. Right. But after a while, as I do this and I'm talking and meeting people, I'm realizing that uh, it's there. I mean, it's my first summer. I didn't go back. Wow. I stayed here the whole summer. So, you know, and, uh, I had a great time. My wife and I went around, hiking, did things, and uh, we we'll always be there. So it's been a good, but I like this. Congratulations. That's, sounds like, sound like David's uh, had some breakthroughs. And I had, a, I had, you know, I, I tell people I, I am the person I was before I got here. Because I've always been kind of peaceful through what right. I want to do. And I, this is my biggest thing is this. I tell people that change, uh, you can't do change for anybody else. No. Can't do it, not supposed to do it, nor should you do it. And I, I realize and I know now that I believe that the track is the energy you put out, yep. you're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. If you're negative, if you're not happy, yep. 
you get it back. Mm -hmm. And once you change that word or change that, it's amazing what, what happens. So I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer. Excellent. I believe in it. <laughs> awesome. That's a great story. Great story. Powerful story. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. I thank all of y'all. <laughs> thank you. You know, we're we're all we are all on this journey, and we are all gonna have we all have a different path, and that's okay. It's not supposed to be the same path. And when we can allow and accept other people to walk their own path, without them having to be to be in agreement or aligned with us, we finally experience this freedom to walk our own path. So, allow yourself, give yourself permission that we talked about last week, give yourself that permission to walk your own path. And to trust where it's leading you. And to trust the path from your past. Don't be hating on that. Don't be judging that as if it should have been or would have been or could have been or were supposed to be different. It was not supposed to be different. Not one part of it was supposed to be different. When you give you, allow yourself the freedom to have a past that you don't have to go back and change something in order to be at peace in the present moment, then you have freedom. Then you're truly free to create and to bring all your power to bear in the present moment and then going forward. But there, if there's something over the past that's, that is still holding you back because it shouldn't have happened, it should have gone differently and it didn't, there was a lot of pain around it that hasn't been healed, getting yourself free of that is the key to moving forward. So whatever it is, if you've got something that you're still attached to, let it go. Find somebody to help you let it go if that's, if that's what it takes. That's okay too. Sometimes we need help from somebody to do that. But pay attention to that and go, wow, this really goes all, you know, if we stop in a minute, anytime we get those doubtful beliefs or those old beliefs, well, a good question to ask is say, wait a minute, how old is this belief? How many years has this been in my program? Because it is a program. What do I need to do to delete this program and replace it? You know, to upload a different program and to keep a new program running. Because those old programs have power. And it's like the malware. Every once in a while you get all these pop-up blockers. <laughs> you know, and, that, and then you're distracted. And then your energy's all over the place because you're focused on something that popped up that happened 10 years ago. And you're like, how is that relevant today? Well, it's only relevant because you're still stuck in it. You're still attached to something that didn't work out, that wasn't supposed to work out. It's a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but... When you can embrace that, you create freedom because it's all about freedom. If I'm not free to create something in the present moment, I'm going to experience all sorts of blocks, all sorts of frustrations, and get all sorts of limited results because I don't have all my power. Your power is on the inside. It's not in other people. It's not supposed to come from other people. Nobody out there owes you their power. Nobody out there, like your friend, owes you anything. Nobody out there has to show up in agreement or in alignment with how you think they should show up or what you think you want. No, they're allowed to do their own thing just as much as we're allowed to do our own thing. So not only allow yourself the freedom, Finally, release other people in your life that may be dragging you down by allowing them to be just as they are, requiring no change on their part. Freedom. You know, it's funny. The teachers come in my office now. They call me like the law of attraction thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One day I showed up in my office and I had this couch. And I'm like, what's going on here? You know, so, um, it's, it's just... It's, it's surreal, almost, and um, 
I just, you know, this one teacher, you know, she comes in and she's like, David, I, I, my, my husband, he's driving me crazy. We've been married 16 years and he's still doing the same thing, right? <laughs> and, uh, and she was just, she was just, I can hear, I can hear myself. And, uh, and then I just told her, I said, you know, you have all the answers. I, mean, I, I want to tell you what to do, but you have all your answers. That you, you, as you're telling me, mm-hmm. she's answering it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, but you know what's holding you back? And she says, what's that? Fear. It's nothing but fear. You know what's holding you back. Yeah. And um, you're giving too much power. Yeah. You get your power back. So mm-hmm. it's so simple. You tell people, they be like, yeah. That, and that's the biggest thing that that concept right there of fear. You know, what would you be? What would you do if you weren't afraid? Remember from Who Moved My Cheese? What would you do if you weren't afraid? I gave my daughter a magnet when she was here that said, "What would you do if you knew you could not fail?" Okay. What would you do if you honored what you really want? What do you want? And what if you really honored that? How much more power and peace would you have because you're finally giving yourself something that you haven't given yourself yet? And that's why you're in the state of anxiety and stress that you are anyway. It's because you haven't honored yourself. Anger, typically... Externally directed anger is almost, in my experience at least, without a doubt, directly related to self-anger because we didn't stand our ground, we didn't create a boundary and honor it, we didn't say what we thought needed to be said, we didn't do what we thought ought to be have done at the same time. Um, uh, and so... Those type of feelings create self-anger, and we don't know what to do with that anger because I'm going to hold you responsible for it. Because as long as you're responsible for it, I don't have to be. I don't have to be accountable for changing anything. I can hold you accountable and make you the target of all my anger, then expect you to change, and then only after you change will I finally be at peace. Well, that's the big lie, and that's the big illusion. And that's true with money, relationships, work, family health, whatever, anger and depress- depression is, is sometimes very much associated with self-anger. Again, it's the same thing. We can move from anger to depression, and I can be depressed that I've never said what I should have said, okay, uh, done what I think I should have done, you know, responded the way I should have responded. And assumed responsibility when I know deep down I should have assumed responsibility or accountability. So sometimes depression is um, controlled or influenced by an inner directed self-anger because of judgment, of how we're judging ourselves and how something has happened or transpired. And so pay attention to those things. Those are the things that can clutter up our energy and keep us out of vibration or alignment with what we really want. But the first question is, the first question I ask my clients is, is, well, what do you want? What do you really want? Sometimes they know. Other times they've been so focused on what they don't want that they really don't have a clear answer for what they do want. Okay? Well, that's okay, because you can get there through, by going through what you don't want, you can get to what you want. But if you don't ever get to what you want, you're forever recycling the old energy around what you don't want, and you're forever stuck in that process. So what do you want? And until you start moving in the direction of and honoring what you want, you're going to stay stuck. Until you move in the direction of honoring what you want and getting clear around what you want, you're going to get stuck. But once you start to move there and make decisions that are based on what you want, that are consistent and authentic with 
your purpose, your values, the conditions, what you want, what your life is like. I don't want to live in North Carolina anymore. I'm going down to Georgia. That requires honoring and clarity and commitment to honoring what you want. Because had you stayed in North Carolina, you wouldn't be happy. You'd be, well, I, I should have gone down to Atlanta, but I'm staying in North Carolina because of all these other reasons that aren't aligned with what you want. And so then you end up blaming somebody else for keeping you in North Carolina. Oh, it's your fault I never went to Atlanta. I should, you know, I should have gone to Atlanta years ago, but you wouldn't let me, or I felt that if I did, I would let you down. Well, what, wait a minute, that's not about the other person at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations for honoring yourself. Congratulations for honoring yourself. Congratulations for honoring yourself. 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 Because by doing that, you turn the single most powerful key to transforming your own life and taking responsibility and accountability for it. And by consolidating your power and bringing all your power back to the inside. Because as long as you're not doing that, all of your power is floating around outside. Everybody else, they say jump and you say how high on the way up. And then everybody else is on a puppet, you know, on, on a string. Scripting plays an important role because it's writing as if you already have what you want. You're writing about it in the present moment as if you already have it. And you're describing it with very clear vibration about what it looks like, feels like, and sounds like to have what you want. That creates conditions and alignment for the universe to bring it. That's the law of attraction is once you align your energy to what you really want, you start vibrating like my magnet. I think I left them in the other room. I'm, I start vibrating like a magnet, and I start to bring it or something like it or better to me. And then voila. I wanted the domain johnhyatt.com. Okay? It has been owned by somebody for 16 years, a realtor, I think, out in California. Okay? So... A year and a half ago, I, you know, saw, checked GoDaddy, see if it was available, you know. Um, well, first I typed in the domain and I didn't see a site anymore. And I'm like, oh, something's up. So, come to find out that, you know, I found the guy on LinkedIn, communicated with him a little bit. And he used to be a real estate guy, but his, you know, his life was going through some changes. And I approached him about if he would transfer the domain. Well, he was going through some life issues, so he blew me off because you know it wasn't important to him that he transferred he would had to go to go daddy and transfer and so i'm like ah oh, okay whatever so uh i went on you know but in the back of my mind i'm like man i really want johnhyatt.com so just a couple weeks ago or last week i um uh, because when I would Google it after that, there would be kind of this dummy site, you know, that was there. But I was like, okay, he's either using it for this or he's going to use it. So once again, I just, but I was clear about what I wanted. And I had a new direction because I got the Your Coach for Life domain, okay? And that was important for my branding. So last week, I looked for johnhyatt.com and it's, oh, it's on the GoDaddy auction which means I could put in a bid for it. So I started to bid. You know, and then I found out there was somebody else that I was bidding for. And I didn't know if this was him or some other John Hyatt out there that was interested in getting the name for their own domain. But I scripted. Um, let me get my book. I think I got it here. So the auction was coming down to an end on, was it Saturday? We were at, uh, anyway, so let me read you what I wrote. I was scripting about it. Uh, Today I am already the proud owner of johnhyatt.com. It is mine. It belongs to me and I own the domain for my use. Others lose interest in it, forget about it, or freely make it available for me, gladly releasing it. See how I'm writing and describing the conditions. I am aware of the domain and pay quick alert 
attention to the process of securing it and by doing so the domain is mine at a reasonable perfect fair and affordable price of a hundred dollars or less all things necessary in the universe have already aligned to bring this domain into my experience for my use and in the service of millions of others see what I'm saying in the service of others think bigger than what you want is just not about you um, Thank you, God, for the abundant universe that brings all things to me in perfect, right, divine time and order. I am emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially available to receive and claim the domain johnhyatt.com as mine right now. Thank you, God. I release and let go and declare it so. So during the bowl, while we were out bowling with my kids, I was watching the, you know, and I'd put in a bid and it wasn't anything for a few hours, but then in like the last 30 minutes, there started to be activity, so I was paying attention. So, by paying attention, and I'm a firm believer that by scripting it and allow and aligning with what I wanted, I got it. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, but that, it, that was a process for me. Okay, and it started a year and a half ago. See what I'm saying? So sometimes you're going to start things and get clear on what you want, and you're going to think, it hasn't come yet, so I must not be meant to have it, okay? Or maybe I don't want it in the first, you know, you'll go through certain things, but sometimes it's a matter of just allowing yourself to move. I released and let it go because I figured, okay, I'm going to go get yourcoachforlife.com, and I'll use that as my primary domain, and I still have johnrhyatt.com and, you know, other domains, but Do so I... Coach of Love will still be there too, but. Coach of Love dot com. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'll check. I'll check that. I've been having some problems with um, malware and stuff on that site, but I'm in the process of of redoing my website anyway too. Um, so anyway, I just share that um, to you all that scripting is real because the law of attraction is real. It is universal law that this is how things come to us, how things come to us in the flow. And it's an action-based law. It's not just a bunch of fluffy words and putting it out there and just saying, well, I put the words out there and I can just sit on the couch and not do anything with it. Because I could have said, I'm just going to sit out there and just allow this thing to come to me. Instead, I'm like, no, that's not how the law works. I need to be proactive and act and, and act in accordance with the law. But it was my, how my energy, as I was looking at it, my energy was aligned when I was checking it. I wasn't like freaking out or stressing that if I lost it or didn't get it, that it would be the end of the world. So it's how your energy is around what you want that really makes the difference. Um, Brandon. Question. As you was talking, I realized that an area of my life I gave up my power on. And I can't I know I can't fix it all in a day or it's a process that you know. Would you recommend that I constantly not constantly but remind myself that I did live in a space of like you get your power up until it become until it clicks like I refuse to do that again. Here's, here's, what do you think would be the most powerful way to affirm that? Well, be, become aware and live in a space of that. Acknowledge to myself that I get, the reason why I haven't uh, maybe uh, improved in the areas because I did give my power. Give my power. Okay. So owning that and accepting that. Um, and then affirming what? Affirming, affirming what I really want. Which is? Um, I mean, I know what it is. But, uh, I, I always struggle. All right, well, I'll tell you what it is. Um, over time, I've, I've allowed myself to become negative about relationships. Okay. And I think I've, I've told myself uh, things like, from my experiences of relationship, I've told myself, oh, uh, maybe a woman doesn't want a good man, 
Or, sure. You know, I don't know why I, I told myself that through my different experiences. Scarcity thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So where really now that I look at it when I'm talking to it is that I've held myself back from really getting it because of my belief. Right. And I've given up my power. Absolutely. To girls I dated because I allowed them to dictate what I wanted because either the, even if they shut down they wouldn't be like oh it's just like it's like I write, I write it off and like right. this is how I look mm -hmm. right. you know but you attracted that huh? yeah it's, it's what you attracted well yeah that's, I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying now and, and to learn it so here's where here's where you put on a new perspective okay because I could be in the pain of that, okay, because that can be painful. You lose relationships, you invest a lot of time and energy relationships, and then they don't work out, there can be some pain in it. And so I can look at it that way, and um, stay there, or I can go, this would be just an example. Thank you, God, that I gave my power away in those situations with those women. Um, as I look at it, that was a divine, exp a divine learning experience for me because what I learned from those experiences and from those specific girls about myself is, about love is, about relationships is, about men and women is, about communication. I mean, you know what I mean? Make up your list. But there are all sorts of different categories of lessons there that lined up for you, right? If you really give conscious, deliberate, intentional thought to what those lessons are. If those breakups, just as they happened, are perfect for me and for me, what would that look like, feel like, and sound like? Okay? And then your energy and your perspective can change Thank you, God, for those relationships that were perfect for me and in teaching me the value of owning my power. Let's just keep it, of owning my own personal power in all of my relationships. I release, honor, and bless each one of those relationships for being perfect and divine for me. And knowing that I intentionally attracted those relationships into my experience to learn those lessons. And that all the other girls learned their le learned had an opportunity to learn lessons from me okay see it's just not all about you they learned too right to either continue to repeat their pattern or maybe they learned something different about love that was significant that they're pointing back to you going man Brandon taught me this see what I'm saying but then the affirmation in the present moment becomes with the new lens that says Today, I own my power right now. I own my power in all of my relationships. Owning my power today looks like, feels like, and sounds like this. I choose today to own my power in my words, my emotions, my intentions. See what I'm saying? I practice owning my power today. So you're not putting any limitation on your power today. I own, you're claiming, I own my power fully today and I intend to practice it intentionally. In every conversation I have, in every thought that I have. See what I'm saying? I am attracting a new relationship right now where I demonstrate owning my power and my partner owns her power. And together we create an empowered relationship built on mutual trust, on both giving and receiving, and honoring and respecting each other. That woman is out there right now, and she's being divinely led to me. In fact, God is already working behind the scenes right now in making sure that our paths cross in divine time and order so we can practice human love and we can practice owning our power in a relationship. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that becomes the tone of a new affirmation. That becomes the energy of a new affirmation. And then you flipped it, where there used to be pain and guilt and shame and, man, I should have shown up differently. 
you go, I was supposed to show up just the way I did. Let me cut myself some slack. I'm allowed to learn some stuff. That's all that was, was some learning going on. What happened here is not only valuable for me, it's going to be invaluable for my sons or my daughters. Because they're going to come to me and say, Dad, what do I do here? How do I handle this relationship? And you're going to say, let me tell you what I learned about owning your power in a relationship. And the reason me and your mom are like this is because we chose to do that. We committed to that early on in our relationship. See what I'm saying? That's how it works. So, each one of you is a powerful creator. You can live in the moment. Your creative power is right in this present moment. It is nowhere else. And this is where you create conditions for success. This is where you align. This is where you stare your fear down and take all the power out of fear and put it into radical trust. Get clear on what you want, and I guarantee you that the more clear you are around what you want, the more power and success you will have in creating it. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Please remember the Blue Bowl, and there's wristbands by the Blue Bowl, too, for you to pick up. Thank you.